Hey guys, today we're talking about cell organelle interrelationships. The first relationship that we're going to talk about is how the nucleolus, the nucleus, the nuclear membrane, the RFER, and the ribosomes all work together to make proteins. We'll start with the nucleolus. So what does the nucleolus do? Well, the nucleolus has to make the ribosomes. So the nucleolus makes the ribosomes. It sends the ribosomes out the nuclear pore, and some of the ribosomes will attach to the rough ER. Those are the ribosomes we're going to be talking about today. So the nucleolus makes the ribosomes and sends them out ready to do their job. The nucleus, on the other hand, is taking its DNA and in the space of one gene, the DNA will unravel and it will copy just that one small gene as an RNA. In this case, it's mRNA, which is messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA will also go out through one of the pores. And what the messenger RNA is going to do is it's going to find a ribosome to make a copy of it as a protein chain. So the RNA will go attach itself to a ribosome and the ribosome will take that message that the RNA is carrying and it will turn it into a protein. The protein will be made at the ribosome and the protein is sent inside the rough ER. The ref ER will then sometimes modify that protein and basically it will store it, the protein. It will store the protein and um, when the cell is ready, it will send that protein off in a vesicle to the Golgi body. So that's on the nucleolus, the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rough ER are all related to each other. So next we'll talk about how the rough ER, the smooth ER, the Golgi, the vesicles, and the plasma membrane are related to each other. This is often referred to as the secretory pathway. So we'll start first by talking about the nucleus, because that's where it all begins. The nucleus, the ER cell, the DNA, the copy, of a gene as RNA. An RNA will go out the pore, attach itself to a ribosome, and then that ribosome will make a protein, and it'll put that protein in the ER. That protein will move through the rough ER as it's a transport system, and ultimately will find its way to the cell. The vesicle then travels along into the Golgi body and ultimately you'll end up with a protein in the Golgi body. And the Golgi body definitely modifies, if this were a protein, say like an enzyme that's a protein, um, it usually will make it active, so it will activate the protein and it, again it will store it and it will send it along the entirety of the Golgi. And ultimately, now that active and modified protein will be sent again to the plasma membrane. Once the vesicle gets to the plasma membrane, the plasma membrane will undergo exocytosis, and that protein will leave the cell. And if this were an enzyme, it would probably go into the digestive system, let's say the small intestine. If this protein were lipase, lipase is an enzyme that digests fat. And so if this protein were lipase, it would then be in the digestive system so it can go away and chop up all those fats that you ate for dinner. We also should talk about the smooth ER. So the smooth ER is making hormones. So sometimes those hormones are packaged off in a vesicle and Golgi as well. And then the Golgi will send them to the plasma membrane. They will undergo exocytosis and go into the bloodstream, travel somewhere in the body, and, and help the cells of the body 
um, know what the brain wants them to do. The third relationship that we need to talk about is the relationship between the plasma membrane, the vacuole, and the lysosome. So here we've got the plasma membrane. Two things happen with vesicles at the plasma membrane. Endocytosis occurs, and that's when things from outside the cell, large things like food, are brought inside the cell. That's called endocytosis. And when the vesicle, which is formed from parts of the plasma membrane, forms around the food, the vesicle then carries the food inside the cell. And many times those food, very small food molecules need to be chopped up into even smaller parts. So the Golgi body will make a lysosome. Now we already know that a lysosome has enzymes in it, hydrolytic enzymes. And that lysosome will attach with the vesicle that's carrying the food and it will digest its contents. So here you've got now a digested small food molecule, and then now that it's in its smallest parts, the cell can use those parts, those small pieces, like amino acids or simple sugars, and it will take those and make whatever molecules the cell needs to make. You'll also get lysosomes attaching to old cell parts. So here is a vesicle with an old mitochondria. It's not functioning anymore, and that lysosome will attach to it digest it, and then you'll end up again with smaller molecules that can be then made into a new mitochondria. So that's all we have for the relationships. There are other relationships, but I'm going to leave it up to you to try and figure out how things uh, function together. You know all the functions of the organelles, so it should be fairly easy for you to do. If not, you've got your hot questions. Be prepared to discuss all of these relationships in class. See you then.